Welcome to the Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a sprint functionality to our character controller by creating a speed variable that will change based on our user input. This video is adding on to the advanced character controller series, so I'll be sure to link that in the description below. So that way, if you need the previously done code for the character controller, you can go ahead and watch through that playlist. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So to go ahead and start off the video, we're gonna add a action mapping. So we're gonna go up to edit, down to project settings, click on input, and then we're gonna click the plus next to action mappings. I'm going to name this sprint, and I'm going to assign it to my left shift. And how we're going to use this mapping is whenever the player presses shift, they're gonna start sprinting, and whenever they release that shift, then they're gonna go back to walking. But now that we've created our action mapping, we can go back to the scene and open up our My Character script. And we're gonna go over to our header, and inside here, we wanna add a function. It's just going to be void sprint, and this is what we're going to call whenever our player presses left shift. And then we're gonna create two properties. So you property, float speed and u property bool walking and that's all we're adding inside of our header so now we can go over to our cpp and inside here at the bottom of our constructor we're going to go ahead and give values to those two new properties we made so again it was speed which i'm going to have start off at 0.5 this is going to be my walking speed. You might want it to be a little more. You might want it to be a little less. One is going to be your full sprint. That's the max speed you can go. And anything under that is going to be your walking speed. And then for our walking, we're gonna have that be true as our player will be walking in the beginning. If you would prefer them to be sprinting, then you would go ahead and have this be false and this be one. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and scroll down to our setup player input components. And we're gonna go ahead and bind these actions to our sprint. So input component, bind action. And we named our mapping sprint. And then I'm gonna have it be called on IE pressed. I'm binding it to this, my character. And then the function that I'm going to be using with it is going to be my sprint function. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except I'm gonna do it for whenever it's released. So input component, bind action. Again, the mapping was sprint. That's the name we gave to our action mapping inside of our project settings. And then this time we're gonna do IE released. And again, we're binding it to this, and the function that we'll be calling is going to be a my character sprint. We're calling this both when we press it and when we release it, so that way we can flip that walking boolean to the opposite of whatever it currently is. And we'll go ahead and do that by creating our sprint function. So void a my character sprint with no arguments. And the first thing we're going to do is take walking and we're gonna make it equal to the opposite of walking. So what this is saying is if walking is true, whenever we press sprint, then we're going to take the opposite of that, in other words, not true, which would be false. And then the vice versa would obviously be true for whenever walking is false in the beginning, it then becomes true. And now that we have that done, we can go ahead and check if we are walking after we've switched it. And if we are, then we want our speed to equal, again, that 0.5 that we put inside our constructor. And if we're not walking, in other words, we're running, then we want to go ahead and set our speed to equal that one max speed. And that will be our sprint. And now all we need to do is use that speed variable. So we're going to scroll down to our move forward and move left and right functions. And that's going to be our horizontal move and our vertical move. So what we're wanting to do inside of these is in our add movement input call, we want to take the value that we're adding to our movement, in this case, the right vector, and we want to multiply that by our speed. 
So this value is either going to be one or negative one whenever you're pressing on our horizontal move so that way we can go left and right. And then we're going to multiply that either by one, we wanna be going the top value speed, or we're gonna multiply that by 0.5. In other words, we wanna be going slower and walking. And so now we just need to do the same to our vertical movement. So that way it's applied to our forward and backward movement as well. So again, just time speed. And this will just change the value to where either you're walking or you're running. And now that we've applied the speed to our movement functions, we can go ahead and save and go back to the scene. And we can compile our code. And now that our compile is completed, we can go ahead and test and play. And I'm just going to switch to first person just so it's easier to see. So we're walking in the beginning. And then when I hold shift, I go much faster. And if I release it again, I'm walking. And while I hold it, I go real fast. And again, I've released it and I'm just walking. So as a recap, we used an action mapping to allow us to change a multiplier for our speed so that way our player can switch between walking and running. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream games on Twitch Tuesday and Friday. On top of that, we have an app called Blast Off on the Google Store and an asset pack of kids' toys in the Unity Store. And we have a Patreon, and within that Patreon, you can be a YouTube supporter, and with that, it provides you all of our C++ tutorial code. If any of those things interest you or you'd like to support us in any of those ways, a link for all those things will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.